Hey guys, welcome to another MapleStory 2 video. You know, I'm really happy the major I chose in college is a project-based major, because if I had midterms this week, I would have failed all of them. As promised earlier, I'm going to be making a video to help you guys choose the right class for you. Since there's only 9, it's going to be pretty easy to compartmentalize them into one video. But I'll cut right to the chase and tell you what the answer is going to be on what class you should play. Whatever you find fun. I said this in MapleStory 1, I'll say this in MapleStory 2, and I'll say this in MapleStory 3 if there ever is a third one. You gotta pick what class resonates with you, what connects well with you, which class do you see yourself spending weeks, months, years on. In other words, don't choose a class because it's strong, choose a class because it's fun. Having said that though, it doesn't mean you have to marry this class and never play another. MapleStory 2 is not your conventional MMORPG, you don't play the game purely by leveling up, upgrading your skills, get better gear, and fight bosses. There's a lot of other stuff to do. Play music, design your own clothing, build a cool house, play mini games, etc. You're free to jump from class to class if you want, but you wouldn't be watching this video if you were considering that, right? Alright, this is going to be a very long video, I do understand that, but I still recommend at least once you watch the entire thing, so you get to understand what my thoughts are on every single class and how it can resonate with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give a general rundown of each class in the game, and I don't have footage on every class because I only currently play Assassin and Runeblader for the time being, so nothing really too interesting is going to be happening in the background, but instead you're going to be seeing a lot of text on the screen, okay? Alright, let's get to work. Archers are a staple in the MMO genre, long range hard hitters who sport massive damage and attack speed and sacrifice of durability and speed. Naturally, players who enjoy playing an archetype no short of DPS will be attracted to archers as well as some people who enjoy fighting from a safe distance. That doesn't mean you're cowardly, it just means you like to take the guaranteed win instead of a risky playstyle. Rangers are fast and flexible archers, they have a wide plethora of skills that launch streams of arrows to do tons of damage, all while keeping a solid distance from their targets. They're one of the most consistent DPS classes in the game and take advantage of enemies that don't have an easy way to close the gap. But while they are quite squishy, they're not one without some defensive tools. Rangers have the farthest single instance dash in the game, Eagle Glide, going a whopping 7.5 blocks in any direction, much farther than any class. They can only use it once, but this means they can maintain a far line of distance so while they can't strafe, a well-timed position dash can prevent you from taking any damage. They do also come with kiting skills that allow them to knock back enemies or even vault backwards, so you have options for making sure you don't get caught out in a bad spot in case you waste your dash. These guys aren't without party benefits too, rangers come with sharp eyes, which plants an area on the ground giving allies bonus critical hit rate and accuracy, extremely valuable for party rates especially if you have other backliners like wizard, assassin, or heavy gunner. All in all, rangers make a very serviceable class for players who prefer dealing lots of damage and safety easily and prefer consistent output over raw burst damage. It's a pretty simple class to play but it also is a very rewarding one. Heavy gunners take damage to extremes, they choose power over attack speed, making them really potent in ranged wave clearers as well as a great class for taking down bosses. Given the right circumstances and proper execution of your skills, heavy gunners can perform high total damage and boss rates. While rangers prefer to be relatively light on their feet, heavy gunners plant themselves onto the ground and unleash huge blasts of death with their skills, and they have the longest ranged spirit regeneration skill in the game. So as long as no enemies can get up close to you, you're able to do some mad damage on an area effect and single target alike. Heavy Gunners are more damage oriented than Rangers, but they come with an ability that allows them to drop health packs on the ground for themselves or allies to pick up and heal some HP. Not nearly as reliable as Priest Healing, but it's a nice added to support skill. Otherwise, don't expect them to be doing any favors for the party, but not necessarily a bad thing just because they do so much work and damage. Be very careful though, Heavy Gunners are slow, and a lot of their skills are clunky, have long animations and high cooldowns, so make your shots count, and while they have very long range SP regen attack, they're not overall as consistent as Rangers when it comes to keeping your distance. A very powerful damage dealer, but one that might need some babysitting during organized raids. If you're a person who likes carrying your team through boss fights and dungeons, you can definitely have a lot of fun with Heavy Gunner. Next we have the Warriors, another staple archetype in MMORPGs. Warriors are brutes that like to dive face first into danger, often being very bulky and steadfast, tanking damage and aggro while dealing some equal punishment back in return, at the same time protecting their less muscular party members. Players who like to be in the chaos of things would be at home playing Berserker or Knight. Berserkers are nasty warriors that take as much damage as they deal it. They don't care about playing safer strategy, they just go in and tear stuff up and just hope they don't get killed doing it. Respectably durable and equally hard hitting. They're usually the first ones to engage in a fight along with their sister class Knight and love tearing stuff apart as their name implies. Berserkers are not nearly as tanky as their counterpart, but they're one of the best melee damage dealers in the game. Almost all of their attacks cost very little spirit, can be spammed which makes them great for consistent DPS, and also makes Berserker the uncontested best class in the game for wave clearing. 
Now, while they're all about doing things first and thinking later, Berserkers aren't without survivability. Naturally, being a strength-oriented class, they have a lot of base defense, which lets them take a respectable amount of punishment. Skills like Bloodlust let you heal yourself to keep you healthy, and other defensive abilities like Inhuman Endurance can make you deceptively tanky when under a certain amount of HP. While we're on that, Berserkers reward players who don't mash their health potion hotkey. Being dangerously close to low HP causes you to deal more damage, making you even more powerful, and some of your abilities deplete your own health to deal more damage. In a sense, the player acts as the brains of the class while the class just goes in mindlessly. You really have to acquire that instinct of when it's a good time to back out and heal, and when it's safe to keep your HP low. Players who love being one smack in the middle of a fight and dealing huge amounts of damage can enjoy Berserkers a ton, but you still need to develop sound judgment to play this class. It's not hard mechanically, but that means your knowledge of the class in the game will be all the more important. Unlike their sister class, knights prefer to just be unkillable. As expected, these guys are super bulky and can meet shield so much damage for the party, one of the most staple classes to have in organized raids because of just how much they can take. Knights come armed with an arsenal of defensive abilities, increasing party resistance, reducing incoming damage, and even having some good crowd control abilities such as knockback and armor shred. They can even make allies invincible to some attacks, which is paramount for bosses that have very powerful burst attacks that can't even be dodged. If I were to put a comparison on damage to tank ratios for knights and berserkers, berserkers are 70% damage, 30% tank, and knights are more 40% damage, 60% tank. That doesn't mean that knights can't deal their own fair share of damage though. While not being as offensive as berserkers, knights survive for so much longer, which means they can live longer to do more damage. They also have adequate damage in their abilities, and can still dish out some pain, just not as recklessly as berserkers. Knights are a valuable support class and more fun to play with friends when you're in a party. They don't make for the best solo class because while they're definitely tanky, they shine the most when fighting alongside allies. Many of their abilities are area-wide buffs, which means the more people affected by them, the better. Additionally, some abilities require allies to even be used. But you already knew that, right? If you like being a team player and the type of person who wants to be part of the vanguard, knights are a great class to play, but their hidden requisite is that you have to have friends, and we're on the internet, no one has friends, right? But maybe this game can change that. Last Warrior is a mix of both Mage and Warrior, which is Runeblader. These guys are full-on melee DPS classes using elements to imbue their sword to have varying effects based on which element you choose. But whether you choose fire, ice, or lightning, Runebladers have the potential to completely decimate everything they run into, with style. Despite being part of the warrior archetype, runebladers are not that tanky, so you gotta treat this class as you would a rogue or archer if you want to keep yourself from dying. Having a mix of close and long range attacks, runeblader can definitely adapt to situations. Fire, ice, lightning charges alter your abilities, making you a very versatile class since every skill that changes counts as a brand new skill which is a similar base property. As a result, runebladers are a very fun class to play since you have to mix it up depending on what enemy you face and how many there are. Runebladers also have impressive mobility for a warrior class, and match Berserker for being one of the best wave clearers in the game. So while they have that covered, they're a very selfish class, offering no party utility buffs and not being very tanky either. They do come with a few abilities to block damage, but otherwise not enough to meet the role of being a frontliner. Putting it simply, if you really want to embody the edgy lone wolf solo player, you can't ask for a better class than Runeblader. These guys are cool, they're strong but squishy, and they don't care if they have to take on bosses and challenges with friends or by themselves. And they're also my personal favorite class because who doesn't like a magic swordsman? On to the mage archetype, users of magic and spells who seek not to strengthen the body but enlighten the mind. They can fit a variety of roles due to their archetype, from the offensive types who command the elements to lay waste to all who stand in their way, to the trickier ones who like to use the magic to sabotage their foes and turn the tables around in their favor, and to the selfless and caring ones who use their powers to protect friends and ensure they keep themselves healthy by force feeding them vegetables. Uh, I mean healing them, yeah, that. Mages are a classic favorite among players who like to do stuff the aesthetically pleasing way, not necessarily the rugged and straightforward way. Wizard are set offensive types. They have a whole bunch of tricks up their sleeve that can be used for any situation, and due to their vast elemental variety, they're definitely one of the more fun classes to play since you can interchange your skills. Wizards have equal strength in both bossing and mobbing, allowing them good leverage as a solo and party class. Being able to properly chain your abilities will not only make you deal a ton of damage, but can also save you from getting killed. They also have good elemental coverage, ranging from fire to ice to lightning, and also with their standard neutral attacks, you have all ends tied up. Despite having serviceable single target DPS, wizards are mostly meant to be mobbers with multiple AoE attacks and debuffs such as freezing and burning, but they also have token utilities such as boosting your party's damage and making shields that block a portion of your maximum HP. Due to how powerful wizards are, they're also very squishy like most mages, so positioning is key as they don't have many defensive peeling abilities besides their shield and teleport to dash away. So you have to be very careful. Unlike Maple Story 1, Magic Guard is not a thing in this game. 
One other thing, wizards are very hard to play compared to the previous 5 classes, and while you need proper game knowledge to play those 5 classes well, wizards require exceptional mechanics and micromanagement. They have the lowest max HP in the game and weak defense, plus their skills need to be changed sequentially to be effective since they have huge spirit costs and moderate cooldowns. You want to make sure you get your combos done right during boss fights or else you could either be doing a lot of damage or very little. Priest, the most broken class in the game in terms of overall gameplay. I can't emphasize how important and how amazing priests are. As you know, priests are completely selfless, having very little practical application in solo play but being invaluable in a party. Plus, they make you eat your vegetables so they have to be good, right? Right? From an offensive standpoint, Priest is the weakest class in the game, especially when playing solo. Your abilities have very low base damage, and while you do have a stable damaging spell, don't expect to be doing that much compared to a Berserker or Assassin. But what they lack in damage they make up for in utility, bolstering party members with a mile-long list of support skills such as spirit regeneration, movement speed buffs, boosting defense, armor-breaking enemies, and how can I forget healing? Lots and lots of healing. Priests are walking health potions for the party, allowing boss raids that otherwise might be too dangerous to undertake sometimes become child's play. They have some of the lowest mobility in the game, but why bother dodging enemy attacks when you can just face tank them by healing? You don't do nearly as much damage as other classes, but you can take infinitely more punishment. Almost every 4-man party that isn't a team of all berserkers should have a priest. This class forgives mistakes that otherwise would kill you and allow you to brace for heavy impact without batting an eye, no matter what class you're playing. Overall, priest is the best practical class in the game, not because of its damage, but because it's the only class in the game that can do its job. Assassins, Ranger, Berserker, Heavy Gunner, Wizard, these guys are all damage dealers and can be interchanged between each other, but no one can fill the job of a priest except priests. Last archetype is Rogue. They are not your traditional type of dudes, not in the slightest. These guys prefer using more clever, shrewd, sneaky, sometimes underhanded tactics to get the job done. Usually favoring speed over power or defense, they make for some of the most enjoyable classes in the game. Players who don't really like the dexterity and tact of archers, or the steadfast and headstrong playstyle of warriors, or the elegant and enlightened minds of mages would usually pick thieves, because thieves are edgy. Assassin is the baddie that has a penchant for throwing really sharp objects at stuff, being a mid-range attack damage carry with a heavy emphasis on solo performance. They can be very powerful in the hands of a skilled player, but unforgiving in the hands of a maladroit player. If you play Assassin well, you can expect to be very flashy. Assassins have the highest late game DPS in the game, period. More than Berserker, more than Runeblader, more than Ranger, and even Heavy Gunner. And that's because they scale off of critical damage. Using two weapons means you can chain skills together, and a variety of attacking skills make your fingers dance. Their main shining aspect is in single combat, which makes them extremely potent in boss runs where there's usually only one target. You can almost always expect the Assassin in the party to deal the most damage during the fight. Assassins also have the best combat mobility dash in the game, allowing them for fast repositioning to avoid attacks and keep their distance. Now I said rogues are very difficult to play, and yes, assassins are challenging because they're mid-range, so while they have some distance between them and the enemy, it's not far enough like ranger where you can just stand in place forever. You have to be light on your feet and make use of your dash to ensure you don't die. Assassins aren't the best at wave clear since their main AoE abilities have moderate cooldowns, which means you'll have to kite enemies in the line for mobbing and try to make your burst abilities hit as many as possible. They do have DPS, but they're a burst-oriented class, so you have to develop the instinct of knowing when is the right time to unload all of your abilities if you want the short time frames to count. Assassins are fun and powerful, but not very forgiving. If you think you can handle a bit more risk and reward, Assassin is a better class theoretically than Ranger. But should you prefer more consistency than Ranger, it's a safer choice. Still though, very 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 fun. Alright, that wraps up for all the classes you should give a try if you want to pick a good class to main. Oh wait, I forgot, there's one more. Silly me. But I won't talk about them in this video because I wouldn't recommend this class to anyone. I don't care how much you tell me it's worth trying out, thieves are not good. They require too much effort for such little gain, and any other melee class can do Thieves job better for less work. The only thing Thieves have redeeming for them is that Thieves have the potential to do a lot of poison damage to bosses, which can definitely add up, but all of their other skills are underwhelming and just really bad. Plus, Thieves are a melee class, with no defense. So by picking a Thief, you're basically trying to play Maple Story 2 and take true damage with every single hit you take. I'm not hating on Thieves. Objectively speaking, I just don't think they're a good class right now. Maybe in the future they might get a buff or something, but right now you're just better off playing something else. Of course, having said that, there are probably going to be some people who do want to play the class, in which case, I'm not going to say don't play the class, but you're really just setting yourself up for a really, really hard future. But that wraps it up for this really long video. Whew, okay, that didn't take like 20 minutes to record. Alright, so there you guys have it. Hope this helped out a bit. If you're still struggling to pick a class, you can always feel free to play each class individually and see if it clicks with you. MapleStory 2 is a simple game and not very complex in the RPG aspect, so you can feel free to take your time and try all the classes out. No one said you had to plan roots in only one. 
I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and if you have any questions about any of these classes, let me know in the comment section below. I mostly only know Assassin, Berserker, and Runeblader at the moment, but if you viewers feel like helping out your fellow Mablers, then you're welcome to answer questions yourself. Share this video with anyone who might be on the fence about which classes to play because I'm sure there are a lot of them. It's a new game after all, but I'll see you guys again soon in the next video. Take care.